Let's quickly mm. discuss the return of John Stewart. Yes. It's your first experience working with him and mine as well. Okay, so um, I ask you that, yeah. What's it been like and what are your impressions? Very positive. Man, I have such a weird life. You know, I watched him forever and now I'm in doing a piece with him. When I first met Jay Leno, I actually said to him, hey, you look how you look. Because I hadn't really met a lot of celebrities yet. And I was like, I can't believe he looks just like how he looks. I couldn't really. So John Stewart is just, he seems like how he is. He's, he's positive. He's funny. He's very, very smart. I've enjoyed his two shows on here very much. Very well researched. Very silly. I think people forget how he can also just be really silly. So he'll hit you over the head with a very intelligent, poignant, societally um, important se sentence, and then he'll do a Polish joke, which is what happened this week, which made me laugh. By the way, Poland started World War II? Why would a country whose navy has submarines with screen doors want to instigate a war? <laughs> Quick history lesson. Years ago, for reasons nobody is really sure of, a stereotype emerged that Polish people were inept in various ways, including, obviously, submarine manufacturing, and even something as simple as the changing of a light bulb. I don't know actually how many Polish people you think it takes to change a light bulb, but it's certainly less than the conventional wisdom at that time would tell you. Now, we know that Polish people are as smart as anyone and certainly did not deserve to be invaded by the Germans who, of course, accomplished that by marching in backwards, so the Poles thought they were leaving. <laughs> so it's been great. I look forward to getting to work with him and getting to know him better. What about you? Have you worked with yeah, him Yeah, it's been great. So I haven't worked directly with him on any yeah. pieces, but that first meeting that he had with the directors yeah. and writers, you know, where he sort of gave us this general's pep talk was, was like, so inspiring. Yeah, I mean, was. I think... I started at the show about nine months after Trevor started hosting. So for me, it's always been kind of Trevor's show, although yeah. I did grow up watching it sure. with Jon Stewart. I mean, when I was in college, it's like every night you're mm -hmm. watching Jon Stewart host The Daily Show. So the thing that I thought was so funny is he's so earnest and positive, even in these private meetings. And then he'll always kind of drop one little thing Definitely. that is like... Uh, a joke so it's not so earnest and yeah. so sweet. He always yeah. wants to put that little edge on it, yeah. which is it's fun to watch. Well, it's what he and now The Daily Show is. You know, we will, of course, talk about really important topics, but there's going to be laughs. And comedy, the way I like to approach it, or at least in my idealistic mind of comedy, is that it's meant to challenge and it's meant to speak truth to power which is a very hacky phrase at this point. But that is essentially what it's doing. And we've been on the air. I mean, I've been here for almost eight years. Yeah. We've never been able to do a Polish joke until John yeah, was until here. He finally was brave enough <laughs> to call out, you know, yeah, the that, people who are really running the world. Yeah, that was funny. And he also did preface it by saying, "I we nobody really knows why this <laughs> genre of joke became yeah. So anyway, back yeah. to that Catskills comedy, yeah. you know, just yeah. knowing the right. whole breadth of comedy. <laughs> I wanted to ask, too, like, how was that chat last week you did uh, with him about Tucker Carlson and the dictatorships? That was so funny. An unbelievably embarrassing display of sycophancy from Tucker Carlson. Yeah, well, I'm not sure what that means, John, so I'm going to assume you loved it as much as I did. It made me think that these dictatorships have gotten a bad rap, which is why I've traveled here to North Korea, and as you can see, it's amazing. It was nice to get to be just me and him, you know? I wanted some dad time. <laughs> I want some time with dad. Uh, so that was really fun. And it wasn't perfect. Like it, uh, we, we did it for the show and some of the jokes that we all thought were really funny, but were kind of righty, um, too mean jokes didn't, didn't do so well on the actual performance. So they got cut. Peace out. That's the beauty. So the piece ended up being funnier, shorter, and it worked really well. And it's another testament to, you know, one of the words John used a lot in that meeting that I love and I always forget about, I needed to hear was calibration. We're going to calibrate over and over and over again. And that is what The Daily Show does. 
we try, we don't get it right, we calibrate. We get a couple things right, we calibrate. And so that was a fun chat for me to do with him because I saw there was calibration all the way through from the first draft of the script to the rehearsal to the actual performance. We had to calibrate a little bit. Thank you, editors. And it ended up being great. Yeah, it was so funny. I'm curious to know, so you guest hosted the show a few months ago when Mm -hmm. we were back from the writer's strike. Mm -hmm. It was so great. And now you're getting to host the Tuesday to Thursday after John. Yep. John's my opener. Yeah. You could do worse. (laughs) You could do worse. Um, Do you feel like you're taking a different approach to hosting the show coming up? Or has has John given you any advice? Or do you feel like maybe a different experience since you're going to be following, following John? I'm excited to follow John. I think it's challenging because... Uh, he is effortlessly, I mean, it's not effortlessly, but it feels effortlessly good at it. And when I'm out there, it feels like if I'm good at it, it's through effort, you know? So if he gets to ride the big wave, I get to surf right behind him, which is pretty cool too. So I just don't see any negatives about it. Uh, I get to watch him, learn from him. I then get my own time at the desk. I'm looking forward to not be to being a little more comfortable there because the first time I don't think anybody really realizes it just takes a lot of time and comfort. And when I'm watching John on Mondays, I'm always like, man, he just is like so natural up there. And I'm like, well, wait a sec. It's been thousands and thousands of hours there, you know? So can I make a tennis reference? I was you were expecting it. You're expecting it. Nobody ever wins their first Grand Slam final. I know what you're thinking, Sarah, but what about Yannick Sinner at this year's Australian Open? Okay, he's the one exception. (laughs) The reason you don't ever win in your Grand Slam final is it's it's fucking nerve-wracking. You're figuring out that the balls look different. There's there's trophies standing next to the court. It's packed. It's a different vibe. It's a different feeling. So to be at the desk is different. It's a vibe. Everyone's staring at you. You're not a supplemental player anymore. So I'm looking forward to hopefully feeling a little more comfortable there. (laughs) 